I'm Mila. I go to Pearland High School and one of my favorite quotes or like sayings I guess is something I like came up with and basic or that I came up with is that you're gonna be the only person that limits you from achieving like your best version of yourself so if you don't go your hardest then you're only cheating yourself in the long run and that pushes me to want to do better and want to strive and work 10 times harder than I was before so I like that um my youtube channel um I still want me to mention that honestly if I tell you all the name it's kind of not gonna pop up but i'm gonna mainly be just doing vlogs lifestyle type videos sit down videos chit chat videos just hauls it's just stuff that people like literally recommended me that they thought that they'd find interesting to see but yeah that's pretty much it y'all stay safe and don't forget to like comment share and subscribe bye guys of God. Come on and let's give him glory right where you are. Good morning right where you are. We're just going to give God glory despite what it is that we're facing because he is worthy of the glory. So I challenge you, just shout right here. Say hallelujah. again if I can just press press in your presence and leave all my cares behind me I will be whole I'll still believe I will just lay lay at your feet I will be whole I'll still believe I will just praise praise at your feet right here in your presence I can just press, press in your presence, behold the beauty of your face, if I can just press, press in your presence, and never leave this place, if I can just press, press in your presence, and leave all my care, so I will be whole, I'll still believe.
Good morning, Rock Youth Church. This is Erica Hubbard, Deaconess at the Fountain of Praise, and it's time for a word of prayer. Bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come humbly before your throne on this morning, Lord God, just thanking you and lifting you up for who you are, for all that you do, Lord God, for keeping us, for protecting us, for loving us, Lord God, unconditionally, Lord God. We just thank you, oh God. We praise your name, oh God, on today, Lord God. We thank you for the uh, graduates, Lord God, that have come out, Lord God, this year, Lord God, whether it was from kindergarten all the way up front to high school and even college, oh God. We thank you for keeping these students, Lord God, um, through this time, Lord God, and helping them to be able to be successful uh, in their studies and in their fields and industries, Lord God. We just thank you. We praise you, Lord God, for keeping us safe, Lord God, still, Lord God, from danger seen and unseen, Lord God whether it be COVID, Lord God, or any other thing, Lord God, that we may not know of, Lord God. We just thank you, God. We thank you, oh God, for being our provider, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you know each and every need that is represented here on today, Lord God. We thank you for seeing our hearts, Lord God. We thank you that your word says, Lord God, that if we seek your kingdom first, you give us the desires of our heart, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for looking out for us, Lord God, for seeing our hearts, Lord God and for knowing even the things that we may not know that we want or need, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God. We just praise you, God, and ask that you forgive us of anything that we've done, Lord God, that was please, uh, displeasing to you, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for forgiveness and, and that you help us to even forgive others, oh God. So we just thank you, Lord God, for cleansing us, Lord God, of any unrighteousness, Lord God. We also thank you, Lord God, now for peace, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for coming into our hearts for anyone who may be stressing or having anxiety or, Lord God, just any needs, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord God, that you meet our needs, Lord God, that you meet us where we are, oh God, and we thank you for it continuously, God. We love you, we praise you, we honor you, and we adore you, Lord, for all of the amazing things that you're doing, Lord God, for having a plan and purpose for all of our lives, oh God, and we just give your name all the praise and all the glory, Lord God. We thank you that this will be an amazing day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, good morning, Rock U Church. It is the final Sunday in the month of May. June is coming super fast. And you know what? The summer got here quicker. Am I the only one that feels like it was just January, like 30 seconds ago? Well, I'm excited for the summer and the opportunity to do so many great things. But before we get into the summer, a couple of announcements I want to share with you about some things that we have coming up real soon. The first one is shout out to all of our high school graduates who are graduating this year. On June the 13th at the Fountain of Praise, we are going to have a car mincement. If you came last year, it's the one where we drive through. We're going to have all kinds of stuff out there, surprises. And we're going to be celebrating you for graduating from high school. But we need to know that you are graduating. So send me a message uh, to william.cumby at tfop.org or shoot us a message on our Instagram page or Facebook page so that we can know that you are graduating. Um, also, a couple of announcements. Bible study is back. We're back on Wednesdays. So join us every Wednesday on Zoom. Uh, you can find out more information by visiting our Instagram page. Last couple of things. I still want to see your prom pictures, so shoot them over. We would love to post them to the page and let other people know how handsome or how beautiful you looked in your prom regalia. Uh, lastly, here is something I want to remind you. Next Sunday is first Sunday, so come by. You can pick up your communion sacraments, uh, or you can uh, get something from your house, but remember that next Sunday is first Sunday. All right, let's get, in, let's get into the Word of God. So we are doing this series called, you know what it is, it's gonna be me, right? Put it in the chat right now. Say it. It's gonna be me, man. And I hope that you've been blessed by this series. And we are now in the third part of it. And man, this is, this is a, this, I gotta say, it's a good one. Now, I was thinking about this series of it's gonna be me and, and how God really wants to push us to the promise that he's already prepared for us. And, and I, I drink coffee. I do, no lie. And I started thinking about the coffee bean. Do you realize that the bean 
actually changes the hot water. The very circumstance that's created or that causes pain. Like this. What happens is the, when the water is hot, it releases the fragrance and the flavor. And, and if we are to use this as an analogy for our life, when circumstances come upon us that are difficult or arduous or trying, what it should do is make us better, but then in turn, we should change our situation around us. Th that's what I'm talking about today is that when you say it's going to be me, that not only will I receive the pressure, but the way I react to the pressure does more than make me better. It changes my circumstances around me. Somebody say release the flavor. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I, I want to talk today about pressure. You know, when I think about pressure, we often make statements like pressure busts pipes and pressure makes diamonds. And we put ourselves in the place of the diamond or the pipe. But the reality when I'm saying this is that instead of us being the diamond, maybe we should consider ourselves as the pressure. What I mean is that instead of us procrastinating for someone to push us into the place that we need to be, why don't we start pushing ourselves? Well, somebody put this in the chat. I am the pressure. You've got to be the pressure. You've got to be the one that says, I'm going to push me to where I need to be. Everyone can tell you, I say this all the time, nobody can be sick and tired for you. You've got to be sick and tired for yourself in order for you to get your own self up. E even when we look at the story of the man who was at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus said to him, pick up your mat and walk. Jesus never touched him. He had to stand on his own two feet. He had to feel the pressure of the ground underneath his feet. He had to feel it, his legs getting underneath him. I want to give you this moment right now. Be the pressure. You've got to move. The body was made to move. Guess what? Hashtag go. In, in the New Living Translation, I... I Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Philippians 3, verse 12, it says this. Uh, Paul actually writes this statement from a place of not being in great company or doing wonderful things. He was actually in a, he was in a present type place. Uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, he says this. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. He said, I haven't obtained it, nor have I reached perfection. He says, but I press on to possess the perfection for which Christ first possessed me. That, that's a bit of a tongue twister, but we're going to break it down a little bit. Here Paul is saying uh, the very first thing. He says, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things. Many of us, when we post things on social media or we, we say these things that we're doing, we can give the, the, the notion that we have it all together. Truth is, people don't post their problems. But Paul is saying, listen, I'm not trying to tell you that I have it all together. Don't, don't, just because it looks like I have it all together doesn't mean it's all the way there. But what I will tell you is although I don't have it, I haven't stopped trying to achieve it. I, I'm still working for it. He says, I have not reached perfection. I have not achieved these things. But he says, uh, uh, I, I'm pressing towards them. My first point that I want to give you is this. Be grateful yet aggressive. <laughs> I like that. Be grateful yet aggressive. Paul said, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I've already reached perfection. He's saying, I'm grateful for where I am, but I'm aggressive about what I want. A true story, as I was driving to church today to record the message, I, I was thinking about, man, I really, I'm grateful for where God has got me and where God has me, but God, there's so much more that I want. And I'm like, well, I just don't know what to do. And as God is my witness, I looked up from driving and there was a vehicle in front of me and the license plate said push. What he was saying is God was telling me, uh, uh, he was personifying it in the, in the place of a car that was in front of me. He was saying, William, I'm glad you see where you are, but I want to tell you as you are looking at that car in front of you, this ain't the end. You've got to push. Somebody put that in the chat right now. Push. Be grateful for where you are, but understand this, be aggressive about what you want next. Listen, we don't stop at elementary school. It ain't over when you graduate from junior high. And please believe, when you walk across that stage as a high school graduate, that's not the end. Be grateful, but be aggressive. God's got so much more left for you to achieve. Here's my second point. We talked about earlier uh, being wanting to be the diamond, right? That the pressure creates diamonds, but there has to be pressure. And too often we are procrastinating for other people to be the pressure. 
But I want to challenge you. Here's my second point is to be the pressure. That you be the one that pushes on you to say, I've got to do better. I've got to get up. I've got to make a move. I've got to achieve some things. You've got to be the pressure. Paul said, he said, I don't mean that I have already achieved it or that I've already reached perfection. He says, but I press on. I like that. He said, I press on, which means to say he was already pushing, but he had a little bit more in him. Do you realize or do you know that we do not operate at 100% capacity? Uh, honestly, tell me, in this school year, it, be truthful. Were you giving 100% in all that you were doing? In, in your classwork? On your, tell me, were you paying attention in teams or were you asleep on teams? <laughs> were you, were you uh, giving your all to the papers? Were you giving your all in sports? Were you giving your all to the things that you do? Or were you doing enough? I know they have different terms that they say, well, you can, if you, you know, good enough is well enough. But if you ask me, I would rather be great. Good enough is never great enough. That you have to do something where you say, I need to be the pressure. Paul, uh, if we look at 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8, through two, or verses 8 and 9, it says this. We are pressed on every side by troubles. He says, but we're not crushed. There's this constant pressure that we'll always receive over the course of our life. Listen, if you're waiting for nothing to push you, it'll happen when you pass away. But from the moment you're born to the day you die, there's always going to be some sort of pressure. The question will be how do you mitigate it or how do you handle it? The pressure. The Bible, this is how you handle it. You realize what God says. He says, we are pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. We're, we're hunted down, but never abandoned. Do you understand when he says hunted down, that means that there is this constant pursuit of you. But God says, even in the midst of other things pursuing you and other things pressuring you and other things pushing you, he says, you will not be destroyed because you are my child. And because you're my child, I will allow you to feel the pressure so that you will push out of the place that you're in, but I won't let you be destroyed. Remember this, you have survived 100% of your worst days. The day you thought it was over, look at you, brother and sister, you're still here. Pressure just made you a little bit better. But I dare you, instead of waiting for the pressure to push, that you start pushing yourself a little bit. That you start telling yourself, you know what, I can, I can do better. I, I, I can do more. I can give better. I can, I can achieve more. And when you start telling you that, you will do great things. What did we say last week? You are the most influential person in your life because you talk to yourself more than anybody else. Be the pressure. Here, here's my third point, and we're almost done. The first one was be grateful yet aggressive. The second one was be the pressure. And my third one is this, move beyond your own capacity. What does that mean? When I say move beyond your own capacity, the, the greatest inhibitors and, and, and limiters to our success is ourselves. We will only do as much as we can do. Do you not realize the Bible says you can do all things through Christ? Do you not realize that God will specifically and strategically position people in your place to tell you, remind you, and assist you to where you need to be? But you've got to make the first step. You, you've got to make the move. Even when Peter asked if he could walk on water, Jesus did not hold his hand as he got out of the boat. Peter had to make the step off of the boat. When the man at the pool of Bethesda, when Jesus said, rise, take up your mat and walk, the man had to stand up on his own. When Jesus spoke to the man Lazarus who was in the grave, and although Jesus called him by name, Lazarus had to move. Friend, I want to give you that statement of if you say it's going to be me, it's my season, you've got to move beyond your own capacity. You've got to say, look, I see what it looks like, but I also see what it can be. So I'll move. I, the other, I, I, I've thought about many times in my own life where I've done great things, but it, I've done good things, right? And you can do a lot of good things in your own capacity, but if you want to achieve great success, you're going to have to pull some other aspects into it you have to bring some things into it and when we move and start bringing in these other parts we can do great things god believes in partnership god believes in partnership he gave elisha to elijah right he gave he gave uh um oh adam and eve right there's so many parts in the bible where he believes in partnership and god will position people in your life to partner with you and push you to the promise but hear me out friend you've got to be the pressure first to make that first step here, here's where I'll close. Here's the, here's, here's the end. Uh, 
my son William and I, we have a lot of things that we love to do. He's into Fortnite, I don't get it. He's, he's into um, Harry Potter, I'll be honest. I have no idea what, I, listen, a, a widget, a, a, I don't know what house I'm in, I think I'm in Gryffindor, Huffin, I don't know, I don't understand Harry Potter, but my son loves it and that's great. But one thing we do connect on is playing Madden. We, we, we love to play Madden together. We, we sit down in front of the TV and we play. And, and what happens is, I, I was trying to learn how to play and when we were playing and I was the, the quarterback, I couldn't figure out why I would select my player that I was throwing the ball to, but the quarterback would never release the ball. I, what would happen is when I would get the ball, I'd pull back, I'd see all the icons for the players that were supposed to catch the ball, but when I would try to throw it, it never would release. And my son said, Dad, if you press the button, it fakes the ball. But when you push the button and hold it down, the ball is released. I'm, 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 I'm talking to you right there. You've pressed for what you wanted. And you've seen it, and it's been good. But it's been right within your, or right outside of your grip. And I'm praying now that as you are listening to this message, that although you've pressed to see it, I'm begging, if not pleading, if not challenging you, to push a little bit harder. Pressing will get you there. Pushing will keep you there. Pressing will allow you to see it. Pushing will have you contain it or obtain it. And I want to challenge as you are looking at this screen, whether it's on your iPad, your phone, your television, friend, it's time to push. Pressing got you there. Pushing will keep you there. If you are persistent, you'll get it. But if you're consistent, you'll keep it. And that's my prayer for you today. Be the pressure. Be the pressure that says, I will push to achieve what God has created for me. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time that we've shared together. I thank you that we've learned today through this message to continue to push, to be the pressure. That although, God, we can sometimes put too much pressure on ourselves, but we thank God for you who reminds us that you allow us to push only so far. So God, open our eyes to see when we should push, but God, also keep our spirits receptive to when we need to be cognizant or conscious of how far we're pushing. God, we thank you that we can achieve and do all things because of you that strengthens us. So God, strengthen our mind, our body, our soul to achieve these great things that you put inside of us even before the foundations of the world. God, it's through you that all things are possible, that in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. And we thank you that when we lack wisdom, we can ask and you will provide these things. And now, Father, we ask that you strengthen us to push to achieve. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week for First Sunday Communion Service here at The Rock.